Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we've looked at a lot of docking stations here on the channel, and you often have to decide between USB Type-C or Thunderbolt, depending on what your computer has inside. This dock I just got in from StarTech actually does both in the same unit, and it will automatically figure out what you've connected and configure itself to work with whatever you plug it into. That's quite a new development here. Uh, this is running with a new controller from Intel that makes this happen, and I think we're going to see a lot more of these coming out in the next couple of months. So we're going to be taking a look at this dock. We're gonna plug a whole bunch of stuff into it to see exactly what works and what doesn't, and then we'll take a look at its performance as well. Now, I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this dock is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This dock sells for about $240, although it's possible to find it for less during sale periods. You've got a single connector here on the front, and this is what you attach to your computer. Now, normally, when you would see a Thunderbolt icon on a dock like this, it means it would not work with a USB Type-C computer. However, this dock does. In fact, you just plug in the included Thunderbolt 3 cable to that USB-C device, and everything just works. And I'm going to show you that working in just a minute. I was very impressed with that. Now, the dock will deliver power to the laptop as well up to 60 watts, and that's going to be fine for smaller laptops like 13-inch and 14-inch laptops, although larger ones like the bigger MacBooks and many Windows gaming laptops require more power. I have found, in my experience, with the Mac at least, that even though the MacBook Pro 15 and 16 has an 85-watt power adapter, it's able to work just fine even though it's getting only 60 out of the dock at max. And the reason is, is that most of the time, the laptop isn't requiring that much power. If you put it under heavy load, it's possible the laptop might not charge, and you might have a certain set of circumstances where it might draw a little bit out of the battery if it's under load for a really long period of time. Uh, but by and large, I haven't seen much of a disadvantage for larger MacBooks with a 60-watt dock, although it would have been nice for them to have delivered a 85 or 100 watt uh, dock instead. Uh, larger Windows laptops though will be a little more problematic. So if you've got a gaming laptop or something like that, you'll likely need to have that power adapter plugged into the laptop and then plug the cable into the dock here to get its ports. But in many cases, this will be a single cable solution. Now, of course, the reason why people buy docks is to get all of the ports that they're lacking on their laptops. And this one, of course, will give you some options for that. So you've got a USB-A connector here on the front. This is a Gen 2 connector, so if your computer is fast enough, you'll get uh, 10 gigabits per second, or at least theoretically 10 gigabits per second through that port. It also will allow you to charge your phone or tablet even if your computer is disconnected, so it's a charging port as well. You've got audio in and out here, although the audio quality out of this is not great. Uh, your computer's audio chips are likely much better, but if you want that single cable for everything, you got that here. On the back, you've got gigabit ethernet, two five gigabits per second USB-A ports, and then another two 10 gigabit per second USB Type-C ports, including one that will charge your devices. Just know that internally, all of the USB bandwidth is shared here. So if you're maxing out both of these ports at the same time, you're not getting 20 gigabits per second, you're likely getting five each. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and again, the speed of these ports will depend on what you're connecting to, and I'll explain more about that in a minute. And then you've got two display port outputs here for connecting up monitors. Now, you cannot connect displays to the USB-C ports here. Also of note, uh, there is no Thunderbolt pass-through here either. A lot of Thunderbolt docks allow you to connect more Thunderbolt devices. This does not. Uh, so if you want to connect displays, these are your options. Now, if you have a Thunderbolt-equipped computer attached, and the computer supports this, uh, you'll get 4K out of two monitors up to 60 hertz. If you have a USB-C computer connected that supports 4K, the max it will do is a single 4K monitor at 30 hertz, and that's because of the limitations of USB bandwidth and how display works over USB versus Thunderbolt. So just keep that in mind, 4K60 is only going to be on a Thunderbolt-equipped PC, but you can, on USB, connect two 1080p displays 
at 60 hertz. It's a little complicated, but the good thing is the doc just does it all for you and your computer will be given what it can do. Uh, but just know that you're not going to get 4K60 out of a USB-C connection. And then you've got your power plug here for plugging in the power adapter. Uh, the power adapter is a little on the large side just because it's pushing all that power through the dock. Uh, but you could easily just put it on the floor given that it's got plenty of cable length for that. Uh, one other thing of note is that it's got a little Kensington lock here. So you can lock it down uh, on a desk with the Kensington locking system. And it looks like too you might be able to mount it on the back of a monitor here if you find a Visa mount for it. So you've got plenty of options here for connecting things up. And now we're going to plug some stuff into it and see how it works. Let's get to it. All right, so let's get some stuff connected to the dock. The first thing we're going to do is connect up my 4K monitor here uh, to the video output with the DisplayPort cable. So we're going to get that going. By the way, you should be able to use an HDMI adapter if your monitor only has HDMI. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is get my Ethernet cable out here and plug it into my network just so we have that ready to go. And now I'm going to attach some power to the dock and get that ready. And then the other thing I want to do here is plug in my little dongle for my Logitech keyboard. And we're going to attach that here to the back of the dock in one of the USB-A ports and get that going. And now that everything is connected, what I can do is take out my Thunderbolt cable that came with the device and attach that uh, to this mini PC that we've got here. Now this PC is one we reviewed a little while back. It's from a company called Pepper Jobs and in full disclosure, they sent this free of charge to the channel. And what I like about it is that it can be powered over its USB-C port with nothing else attached. So we can just plug in the cable here and this would not work typically on a Thunderbolt dock because this is just a USB Type-C connector. But as you'll see here, when we attach the cable to the front of the dock and hit the power button on the computer, wherever that is, there it is, uh, the computer is going to boot up and get us out to Windows here using the monitor without anything else. Just that single cable here running into the, lap into the mini PC, not even a laptop, and it has all of the ports on here that it's going to use through that cable, which is pretty cool. And there you go. We've got our Windows uh, home screen up and I've got the trackpad and keyboard working. I'm going to log into this computer and we're going to see how all this works. All right, so we are up and running here. We're logged into Windows. I've got the network attached here. The video is working. All is good. You can see we can go over to the NASA homepage and load up everything. This is not the fastest mini PC, so if we were on a faster laptop, for example, it might be a little quicker to bring things up, but nonetheless, uh, everything is working here just fine. Now, again, this is a USB Type-C device, and that means we'll have some limitations with it. Uh, the first is the maximum uh, resolution and frame rate that we can push out of that display port. So this is a 4K monitor, uh, but as you'll notice here, we're only getting 30 hertz out of that because that's the max we can get out of this dock when it's in USB-C mode. And as you'll see in a minute, when we plug in a Thunderbolt-based device, we'll have a better performance out of it because we'll have more bandwidth available for video and all the data to go through. But the good news is, is that the Ethernet is running at full gigabit speed. Uh, we did run a test a little bit earlier with the 4K video attached. All was good there. Uh, that's not always the case on some of these docks. Sometimes they slow down the Ethernet or something. So uh, I was really pleased to see performance with that. Uh, now what I want to do is connect up this uh, Gen 2 USB Type-C hard drive to the port on the back of the uh, device here just to see what kind of performance we can get out of it. So I'm just going to attach that. Uh, we'll let that drive connect and once it's ready uh, we're going to run the Blackmagic disk speed test and see what kind of performance we can get out of the dock. All right so now we're running the Blackmagic disk speed test on that uh, Samsung SSD we just connected and you'll see here we're getting about 400 megabytes per second read and write in both directions and that is on a USB Type-C device connected. And I just want you to make note of what we're seeing here because now we're going to connect up my MacBook Pro, which is a Thunderbolt device, and we'll see some of the differences we'll get in performance when we've got more bandwidth going into the dock. All right, so now we're going to connect up the MacBook. And remember, the Mac is running with Thunderbolt. Even though it's the same connector, it's going to deliver much faster performance. Uh, so we're going to connect that cable here. You can hear it start charging. 
And once it gets all configured here, the display will begin working as well. And you'll be able to see this window being dragged across uh, from the laptop to the external display. This is a 4K display. I'll show you what uh, it's running at in a second here. But as you can see, all is good. And because we did not disconnect anything from the other computer, you can see that I can also use the uh, keyboard and trackpad combo we were using with that Windows computer before. Uh, and our Samsung drive here is also connected. And what I want to do now is run that very same test we just ran a few minutes ago to see what kind of performance differences we get out of those USB ports on the back. Let's have a look at that. All right, so we're running the speed test now on the Mac with the very same drive we were running before. In fact, it's plugged into the exact same port. And as you can see here, we're getting much better performance, about double what we were getting out of the Windows computer, which just had that USB Type-C port. So you can see the real difference here that Thunderbolt can make because you've got more bandwidth flowing through that cable. Again, same cable, same connector, but the Thunderbolt host here on the Mac makes a big difference in performance. Uh, I should note that it's not just the Mac that has Thunderbolt. You can get Thunderbolt on Windows devices too, and you'll have a very similar experience connecting a Windows computer up via Thunderbolt versus USB-C. Also of note, uh, is the fact that this display that was only running at 30 hertz before uh, is running at 60 hertz on the Mac here. Again, because we're using Thunderbolt, uh, we are running the resolution here at uh, 4K. And what we've done is scaled up the resolution so that things are uh, not as small on screen. And it also looks sharper. So it says here the UI looks like 1080, but the reality is the display is running at 4K at 60 hertz, which again would not work at this frame rate and resolution with USB-C. And then we could connect another monitor up to it and get two monitors on Thunderbolt running 4K at 60 hertz, again, because it has more bandwidth. Now, computers are not the only thing you can plug into this. We tried a few other devices, too. We're going to take a look at an iPad now, and then we'll look at Samsung DeX. All right, so we're going to connect the iPad up now, again, using the same cable we were before. Uh, the iPad, though, only has USB-C on board, but as you'll see here in a second, uh, things are going to start springing up. So I've got USB here working properly. Uh, that was detected. Obviously, the display is working here, uh, and I can even get at the uh, hard drive here as well. So if we go over to my little drive here that's calling itself Keep Out, that's what I named it, uh, I've got a bunch of files in here that I can access uh, over that USB port. So the dock appears to be fully compatible here uh, with this iPad. Now I can pull the uh, cable out of it here and maybe plug in this Samsung phone now. And this is a DeX compatible phone. So let me just unlock it here. I think I just have to do that to get in. And once we uh, get going here, you can see Samsung DeX booting up and I'm able to use the phone here as well. So I'm just going to unlock this phone real quick and see what we can do with DeX and what it detects. All right, so we got the phone unlocked and it looks like everything's working for the most part. I've got my keyboard and trackpad combo working here. I did check to see if the hard drive would get recognized and the drive is formatted with XFAT and I think it's not detecting it because of that. Uh, what I did do though was plug in a USB stick to the uh, dock here and it did pick up that USB storage. So I think we're good there. It doesn't look like it's using the Ethernet, but of course this phone is Wi-Fi connected and everything looks like it's working here with DeX through the dock with that single cable and it's charging the phone too. Pretty cool stuff. Now one thing that did not work with the dock in our testing were Chromebooks. I've got one from Asus and one from Google. Both have full service USB-C ports. Neither worked with the dock. So I'm not going to recommend this for Chromebook users. But as you saw, uh, the iPad Pro worked fine with it. Uh, just note that only the iPad Pro at the time I'm recording this video has USB-C connections on it. But if you got the Pro, uh, it's going to work here all the way through. Uh, also, Samsung DeX appeared to work just fine. And of course, Windows and Mac PCs also connected up without issue, irrespective of whether they were USB-C or Thunderbolt. 
And that's what I like about this dock is that if you've got an office where people are visiting all the time, uh, you can put this in and no matter what gets connected to it, uh, they'll get a working dock and if they have Thunderbolt, they'll get really good performance out of it as well. And it's really nice to see something that reduces confusion uh, in this USB-C Thunderbolt space. And this dock appears to do that and do it pretty seamlessly. I am sure we'll see more of these things as time goes on here. So we'll do reviews coming up on those. And just be sure if you have a Windows PC to look at the specifications of your particular computer because not all USB-C ports on Windows computers, in my experience, support all the things this dock does. So it's possible your USB-C port will give you all of the ports, but not video or power. Uh, and you do want to make sure you understand what your computer can do before you connect that cable. Uh, but if you do know, I think you're going to have a good time with this one. It's very compatible and definitely universal. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters, The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rajesh, Logic GR, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.